Hi there, this is Brian Terrian with the top five social security disability approval tips for 2021. I do this every year. This year's version, of course, has some new updates to it. So this is not guaranteed to work. Results vary. All the disclaimers. It's based on my 15 years of working with individuals and helping them get approved for disability listening to their stories and understanding from their experience what has worked and what doesn't work. So it's 162,000 members here at the Disability Digest and I've seen around 12,000 cases like go through the system and get approved and I've learned from those that haven't. So here's the top five things. Actually, there's some sub points on this, if you will, and it turns out to be 18. So if you're already approved, um, this will help you understand what you need to do to keep your benefits, but it's really not super relevant for you. But if you know somebody that is in need of getting approved for their disability, sending it off to them would be very much appreciated. So, uh, and at the end, I'll list all the tips, tell you how to get those. We have a course that you can get that goes with this. It's our disability approval course. It's, I'm offering it totally for free. Um, it teaches you what to do, what not to do. It's put together with industry experts like high-profile disability attorneys, ex-Social Security employees. Uh, there's lessons in there from members that have used our strategy to get approved. So at the end, stay tuned for that. You can pick that up as well. So first things first is understanding the process. Know how to communicate that you are disabled and Ideally, two sentences or less. A short, quick explanation that emphasizes your limitations, not your conditions. That's number one. Uh, number two is, and I'm referencing some key points on my other screen here, so that's why I'm glancing away. Know what you should be doing at each step along the way. Like at the initial application, what's important, what's going to happen. You're going to have forms to fill out. You're likely going to go to one of their doctors. Um, that type of information is key. And uh, understand also the expectations for getting approved at each level of the process or each stage of the process. So a lot of people enter this and like, oh man, I get denied. I'm done. Right, but in reality, 32% get approved at the initial application stage, so that's not 100. So you need to understand that you've got to stay in the game, and it's kind of like the survivor mentality. You have to stick it out. Um, find out your check amount. It amazes me how many people go through the process um, and don't know what they're fighting for. Like, what is your monthly check amount going to be? And that's easy to do. We teach you how to do that in our course here. So those are some of the key things about understanding the process and expectations. Two is doctoring. Getting your case to approve um, is really in large part dependent upon uh, consistently seeing your doctors making sure that you get all of your conditions treated and uh, on a consistent basis, there's no gaps, understand there's COVID going on and there's some challenges there, but do the best you can to get everything consistently treated and do what you're told. Like if you are asked to come in monthly and you don't, or you're asked to take medications and you don't, that just creates an environment where Social Security can say, well, if you were doing this correctly, you would likely feel better and could work. So do follow the process, play the game. Remember, the general rule of getting approved for disability is you have conditions that are being treated and you still have limitations from those conditions that prevent you from working. So if you're not getting treated, that really kind of null and voids the whole uh, getting approved part. Um, get doctor support. Understand how to get doctor support in writing and know what to do if you cannot get doctor support in writing. Those specific forms, they're referred to in the uh, disability world as residual functional capacity reports. You bring them to your doctor, they fill them out. It, 
it uh, documents their treatment and their opinion on your ability to work in short getting that done is really critical um, and if you can't get it done there's some steps that you can do to as we call it manipulate the medical records so your limitations are in there so really really super important what's super important what Social Security sees is your yes you have conditions but if they see that you have conditions and limitations that prevent you from working in your medical records that makes a big big difference okay um, understand how to talk to your doctors when you go into each visit most people just go in for their 12 minute visit and they do what they're told but it's really important in today's environment that you dictate the process, that you go in, you understand what to communicate about your condition so that it's going to have information put into your medical records that will help you get your benefits and keep your benefits again. You learn that in course number two in our disability approval course. All right, next thing is your team. Have a backup contact, somebody that can step in for you if you don't feel well, if something happens. Uh, God forbid that there is a deadline and you don't feel well and you miss it. it can get your case denied. Uh, it's unfortunate. Make sure that you have your phone on and your voicemail cleared and have a direct line of communication. I've seen people have their benefits denied simply because they were tried to reach by Social Security, didn't respond to their mail or phone calls. Done. It's unfortunate, but it happens. So for attorneys, I have two considerations for you uh, for using an attorney or a non-attorney representative. The best attorney out there cannot win a bad case, just the way it is. But a decent attorney can win a good case and a great case. So it's up to you to put your case together, see your doctors, get your doctor support. All of that stuff is really dependent upon you and taking ownership of it. So in my opinion, you know, I, I wouldn't in, invest a whole lot of time trying to figure out who the best attorney is out there. You just need somebody to tell your story that can do a good job, right? So work on your case. Um, avoid the autopilot approval mentality. I'm just going to step away here for a minute because I've got something else I want to pull up. And and what I mean by that is with the autopilot approval mentality, um, what a lot of people do is they have this set it and forget it. And they say, well, you know, I got somebody working on it. I got Attorney Jones over there. He's been doing this for 20 years and he knows what he's doing. I got, got it all taken care of. I, in, my, in my experience, that's wrong because if you don't know the process, how are you going to hold your attorney accountable for it? How do you know what they should be doing, right? So um, avoid that. It's a big mistake. Um, hopefully everything, if you have hired somebody, everything is going fine. Uh, so that's my next tip on that. What to do while you're waiting. Um, there's no clear-cut answer for this, but there's this big time void that most people uh, have now in their life. They're not working. It's a big part of their identity. And in my opinion and experience, it's healthy to find something to do that fits within your uh, health, your structure, that you can have purpose. You can do something meaningful. Um, and maybe that's volunteering. Maybe you still have to work a little bit uh, while you're going through the approval process. Um, I'm not sure what it is is but there's people I've interviewed on our YouTube channel that have shared what they've done um, to you know find fulfilling events so find that um, understand the pros and cons of working while you're going through the approval process you know, the regulations say you can work but my experience is it's detrimental to your case once you're approved, understand that you can work, how much money you can make and keep your benefits. So you can use this time as a setup, perhaps, if you want to supplement your disability or do something um, and get some, some compensation for it. Um, this is a time for you to do that. So understand what to do while you're waiting. Uh, last category, number five, is help. Um, encourage you to block out the noise, especially the brother-in-laws out there that they got their disability approved this way and you should be doing this and you should be doing that. There's all, all these disability cases in my experience are different. There's different age, there's different conditions, different severity of conditions, there's different, there's 
different doctors. Just it's different. So you need to find the process that works for you. You need to stick to it. Block out the noise that's out there so that you can go forward, believe in the process that you've put in place to get your benefits approved. Stay in control. Again, make sure that you stay up on each step of the process and what's going on and what should be done. Um, follow the tips on this. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, follow the tips on our YouTube channel. Uh, we keep having stories and success stories coming out. Um, and then once you're approved, we'll help you with your maximizing your benefits. And, and so that's one additional resource that's free that you can uh, do and take advantage of. Uh, we have a Facebook group for a limited amount of people. We take in like five to seven a month that we work with them. It's free uh, individually to help them get approved for their disability. That's another option for you. But the one that's available to everybody that's the most important is the disability approval course. Again, it is free. Um, it brings you through step by step what to do. You can use it with an attorney, especially you should use it with an attorney so you know what they should be doing or you can manage your case on your own with it. So uh, those are the key tips and uh, encourage you to enjoy the ride. Um, so for the disability approval course, um, I'm not sure where you're watching this, but if it's on YouTube, uh, just look down below. There will be a link to it as well as all the uh, 18 different items that I went through. Um, and if you know somebody else, again, that could benefit from this message and this course, please send it off to them. And if you've learned something um, that would be helpful for us to know and to be able to share. Uh, join us in the comments. We'd really appreciate that. So listen, wishing you the best. Look forward to hearing your disability approval success story um, once you get through the process. And I hope and hope and hope that this makes a difference for you getting approved uh, fast.